Right, so if you haven't already worked it out by the title, this is going to contain spoilers of Avengers Endgame. So if you haven't seen it, click away now. You've been warned. Now if you continue to watch, this is your own fault. And yes, my face is bleeding. My cat just decided to attack me. She would have got my eye if... Speaking of which. Um, if I wasn't wearing my glasses. So, you know, glasses do good, guys. She was sitting on the mouse. She didn't want to move. Anyway, I've got a lot to talk about in this video and I don't want to spend the entire time rambling. But... Uh, I'm going to start with my favourite moments of the film. So these are just my favourite moments. These aren't the ones that got me really emotional. We'll get to them in a second. But the best moments of the film had to be Barton. Or one of the best moments had to be Barton finally getting his moment. Lots of people have been talking about this since the first Avengers movie. And how all the others got like... Then we allow how he kind of had his moment where he like jumped off the building and <sighs> I love crying, <laughs> um, but it never really clicked for a lot of people. And I think seeing him with the gauntlet, I like, <sighs> and yeah, just everything in that film, and like even when he was doing his kind of assassination type, then we and um. You know, Rhodey was saying, you don't want to see the mess he's left kind of thing. I was like, yes, Clint. Badass Clint. <laughs> um, the tattoos. Um, obviously, Barton is very different in the MCU to, you know, comic book verse. And I think that's where a lot of people's problems are. And I do agree. Um, I would love to have had the Barton that... I've kind of grown up reading about so but what we've got and what Jeremy Renner brings is still good like I can appreciate them both separately which is where a lot of people fail to kind of make that barrier there's some films I will not forgive but for where they've brought us to Endgame I have to I have to be kind of lenient on Hit and Infinity War. How it... But... Enough ranting. We'll get to the ranting. Um, but yeah, Barton. I love him. I love the man. That's all I'm... <laughs> Moving on, because as I say, I've got a lot to talk about. Um, every time Peter was on screen... <laughs> I've got a list here. Um... Yeah, Pete, I love him. I love how we're gradually seeing him grow into Spider-Man. My one mo worry about it is that they're trying to make him grow up too fast. Like, they're the ones that decided to do this storyline with Peter, where he's actually the kid when he acts bit. And, like, and in a way, they've kind of gave him what should have been Falcon's storyline depending on what verse you're looking at, where Falcon was like Tony's kind of intern, Sam. So, like, they've kind of given him that. And as a result of that, I don't think they've stuck to that. Like, what they've, like, getting the Iron Spider suit is so young in this little baby Spider-Man's life. Like, um, at this point, Peter's only been Spider-Man for what two years not including the five years then me because obviously he was he he would dust uh, he don't count um so yeah he's only actually been Spider-Man for two years he has nowhere near reached his full potential um you know which which I love seeing but I'm also worried that they're trying to push it too fast giving him a lot of these um, suits that come later in his story and like pushing a lot of the love interest on him I think what we all really want to see is just Spider-Man being Spider-Man like I love Michelle as a character 
we're getting it a bit into the far from home trailer now but I, I just yeah but Tom Holland is fantastic I don't think we could ask for a better Spider-Man and hey he managed to not spoil anything this time go him shout out to Mark Ruffalo as well <laughs> but I'm pretty sure they were given like three different scripts or something so they couldn't spoil it um now the most badass part of the whole film and everyone can try and fight me for it not being the most badass part of the film is that first time Cap lifts Mjolnir I, I literally just exploded in my seat, like, I was like, oh my god! <laughs> um, yeah, I, oh, Cap, <laughs> oh, yes! I think Cap also gets kind of overshadowed in the MCU, and it's just like, to see him do that. After all, the only people that have ever wielded it is Thor himself and Hela. So, their cat to stand next to those? Insane. Steve, keep you, you do you. <laughs> um, and I think the other thing kind of moves into the whole all the times I cried, which, newsflash, was the majority of the three hours. Um was getting to see people that they've lost and obviously the big one for that is Freya. I've never cried so hard but also never been so happy to see anyone in my life. Like I thought we were maybe gonna see Odin um, but yeah the fact we got to see her again it's just so lovely. I do feel a little bit robbed that he walked right past Loki, considering our baby boy, baby frost giant boy, isn't coming back. I mean, we are getting the side series thing for him, and Hiddleston's still gonna play him, but Loki deserved better in this universe, guys. Um, they finally gave him his redemption arc and just <laughs> nope um but yeah obviously seeing Howard only really work because of the relationship Tony and Howard have in the MCU it's very different comic book wise and we're not yeah we're just not gonna get into Howard's abusive father I mean, yeah no uh, but there was something quite likeable about Howard in the semi. I think I was more excited to see Jarvis. See when I saw Jarvis when he was getting in the car I was just like <laughs> oh so anyone that's not watched Agent Carter is fucking missing out because Jarvis is like the best. <laughs> um, and of course seeing Peg as soon as I saw the ER on the door behind Cap, I just like practically threw myself out the chair. I was just like, <laughs> my woman, my wife. Oh. Um, so that was all very emotional. <laughs> Getting onto the actual sad, I sobbed like a baby part, um, which was also every time Tom Holland was on screen. Oh, oh, I forgot one thing. Morgan, Morgan, oh. I love her so much. Oh, she's so cute. Um, yeah. <laughs> One day she's gonna be big ass Iron Woman, right? Badass, not just ass. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Oh, I love her. Oh. Oh. Um. <laughs> so, I think the first, other than the start of Barton's family first big part I started crying was when Scott reunited with Cassie. Now obviously that wasn't that sad, like it was quite, it was kind of a mixture too because obviously he's missed all of her growing up 
And I think that's really sad. But then he also still has his daughter. So it was very mixed emotions. And... Oh, my little, my little jelly bean Cassie, it's all gone up. Um, the obvious thing, I think one that got most people was Natasha and Barton fighting for who was going to die for the Soul Stone. And I am getting emotional just <laughs> thinking about it. Now, in the viewing I was in, there was a lot of like, oh, it, it's going to be Barton. They're not going to kill Black Widow. Um, but I was sitting there like, no, no, Nat's going. They kind of threatened, threatened to and hinted about killing Clint too much. That if they kill Clint, it isn't going to be that impactful. And they wanted it to be an impactful death. You know, you're not going to sacrifice the Soul Stone and not have a death that's really going to shake the audience. Just like how Thanos killed Gamora. Um, like, that hitting, like... Oh. But to see them fight for each other like that, it just makes me really want to see more of them. So, I know that the Black Widow movie is coming, that will focus on the Red Room and hopefully do it better than they tried to explain it in Age of Ultron. And, yeah. I And I know that Sebastian Stan has been confirmed for being on that. I need to get more of the Winter Soldier. Give me that beautiful, beautiful man. <laughs> that beautiful man speaking in Russian again. Um... And that silver arm will be back. <laughs> All the checks, they're me. All the checks. <laughs> um, but I really want Clint to be in it. Like, I really hope... Like, yeah, I just really want to see them. And, oh, and their friendship. And their all. Because I don't actually ship... Um, like MCU, Bucky Nat. Um, I think Bucky. I don't think they've really managed to like build that relationship. I think the way Bucky is in his state, he just needs to go to sleep. Someone just give Bucky a nice warm bed, <laughs> please. That's all I'm asking. A nice warm bed. His plums. His good cuddle um, I'm still mad about the white wolf storyline they tried to spin on Bucky like fucking stop just let him be Bucky stop trying to nah um, but of course you had Tony and I can feel everyone just be like <laughs> when I've said that <laughs> Um, yeah, I honestly don't know where they're going to take the whole universe without Tony. So much revolves, like so much of the direction they're trying to go and the storylines they're trying to go with relies on Tony. Like the only benefit I see from two, two things I see from killing off Tony Stark as you get that beautiful character that made for Peter, um, especially because we never got to meet Uncle Ben in the MCU. So you get that lovely like character arc for Peter. The only other thing I can think of is the fact that Tony Stark isn't going to be their go-to character anymore. But I'm not really, I'm not feeling his death. Like, fucking sob, that fucking funeral broke me. Broke me. 
Um, but, yeah. Um, he, for anyone who hasn't read the Infinity Gauntlet comic books, the, um, there was a part, this is more bleeding into the Guardians comics, where after Infinity War, Tony ends up stuck in space with the Guardians, which is obviously we've now seen Thor is going off with the Guardians. Um, so they're kind of giving Tony's story to Thor, I guess. But it's funny because you get to see Tony completely out of his league, which is something you don't usually see. Um, you know, like, Tony is completely outsmarted by a fucking steaming drunk rocket. Like, and Groot is actually a genius. Of course, we don't have our Groot anymore. We have a baby Groot, which is another thing that pisses me off. Um, James Gunn, I love you. Okay. But, like, yeah, I just really wish we had our Groot. Um, our big, beautiful, gentle... I say gentle. He literally, like, slammed people against the wall multiple times. But, you, you know, this baby Groot is so aggressive. Like, he's just, no, stop. 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 <laughs> um, but... Yeah, like, and you, of course, you get the superior Iron Man who comes out of that. Um, and that would have been cool. A lot of the Car Carol Danvers in the Avengers comes back down to Tony. Um, like, there's a lot that rides on him. And to lose both him and Captain America in the one film it's a lot like yeah I'm not sure who I would have rather they killed if it wasn't for Tony like if they still wanted to kill three of our Avengers I'm not sure which one I would pick in Tony's place first of all I would give Cap Tony's death um but I don't know I really don't know um because obviously they're not going to kill any of our new ones. Um, hmm. That's something to think about. But, of course, I mentioned him there. Mr. Rogers. I was so happy him and Sir Peggy finally had their dance. <laughs> oh. Now, if you haven't worked it out, cat particularly Steve is probably one of the most impactful heroes out there for me and I <laughs> and to see him and Peg finally together <sighs> my heart however <laughs> they basically just stuck a knife in Daniel Sousa's back and was like, fuck you. Um, <laughs> it's fine. I'll date Daniel. It's, it's all good. Um, I'm sure there would be plenty of people willing to date Sousa. <laughs> um, but yeah. I, as much as it was lovely and sweet, I would have rather Cap gone out like the hero he is. Um, so this bring, and then of course, the fact that Gamora is still gone. I mean, technically, technically, the only, the only thing was that it was searching. Technically, we never saw the result of that search. I'm just really confused, to be honest, when Tony done his snap. Um, I think I need to watch it again. Um, because 
why why is Po Gamora? Quill had a perfect chance to get to know her again. You know. More for her to get to know him again. And from what the film portrayed with the snap she was turned to dust with Thanos and the Chitari and whatever else. So, meh. Um, but then, we never actually saw that happen. And Marvel have a habit of if it doesn't happen on screen, don't assume things. So I'm, I'm really hoping she's still out there. And I'm really hoping that Quill gets their way. Um, because it was also a dick move to take James Gunn's character, kill her off, be like, oh, she's not coming back like the other people are. Um, and like, not consult him about it. Like, fuck off. Like, he was already writing Guardians 3. He's been writing Guardians 3 since the second film hit cinema. Like, yeah. Which I think was my biggest upset in the entire film. Like, the lack of the Guardians. This goes for Infinity War as well. Like, the Guardians of the Galaxy are the biggest standpoint against Thanos. Considering we're including Nebula as a Guardian here. Two of them are his daughters. They are like the biggest group of people who have. Um, like, I, I just don't understand. There was a version where Gamora and Nebula team up together and kill him. Like, that would have been badass to see like that's something i would have paid to fucking see um either that or the way that kind of went down with tony but with steve instead um because steve as well being super soldier would have probably been able to cope with it for a bit longer uh and we might have actually got a bit of a fight from steve do you know like and that would have been cool so yeah but mostly, there should have been more of the Guardians. But then I think that was also... The Russo brothers didn't know what to do with the Guardians. Like, and that's not something that's okay for this storyline. Um, yeah, like, we saw Drax and Mantis all of, like, twice. And they never really said anything <laughs> in Endgame. Like, um, Nebula and Rocket were like really the only ones that we actually got to see um like quill was just kind of put in for a bit of comedy relief uh gamora kind of just edged that um she was a tiny bit of plot building but yeah it was lovely to see nebula in that state of not being a bitch um, and Rocket's always been my favourite guardian, so you know. <laughs> but yeah, like, it just kind of sucked. Um, which of course then came back to doing what the Russo Brothers films always do, and that's using the same character to solve the same thing over and over again. The idea that they said, this is what they said, not what we made up, of doing the snap and getting rid of half the characters was to shed the light on ones that don't get as much screen time. The ones we were left with were Thor, Captain America and Tony Stark. The three most given screen time characters of the entire MCU. They left Okoye, they got rid of T'Challa, and they left Okoye, and Shuri, like they got rid of Shuri as well. They didn't show her until T'Challa was back. You had a great moment 
to build Okoye's character. So, fuck you. She's my wife. We're going home. <laughs> um, yeah. And of course they left. Scott. Scott carried this fucking film on his back. Scott Lang is our hero of the endgame. End of. Done. Deals. Bye. He does not get the credit <laughs> for any of this. And that just makes me so mad. Scott, you're fantastic, baby. Keep going. Um, what else? Like, there's just bits for the next phase that I'm no longer excited for. Like, I don't think Thor and the Guardians is going to have the same dynamic. Um, I mean, obviously Thor is so different to Tony. Um, and I'm so torn because Thor should have died. Um, because that's why he wasn't in Civil War in the comics, is Thor died. Um, and like, yeah. Um, sorry, phone singing. Um, yeah, like, oh, mm. um, but at the same time, I really don't want to lose Thor in the MCU. Do you know, like, it's such a, yeah, um, sh she, for apparently friends, she just is weird when she's sitting on things, aren't you? Um, yeah, she attacks her when she sits on top of the fridge and stuff as well. Um, it's like a power complex thing. Being a woman. Um, but stuff like that. And like, I hate Captain Marvel. I'm just going to put that out there now. I don't, she's not awful in the comics, but oh my God, Brie Larson. <laughs> Why? Out of everyone. Why? I just, the way they tried to push her in the film, like she's this powerful, badass woman and you should love and support her. No, no, Natasha was my badass woman. Natasha, Okoye, Wanda. That's all I need. Um, mostly because Okoye is played by Denai Gunara and we love Michonne. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, just there's... Mm, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling the next phase. Far from home, yeah. If James Gunn can sh salvage the Guardians, yeah, fantastic. Doctor Strange too. Actually, I'm very excited for. I haven't really spoke about Strange in this. Oh, the the ancient one again. Seeing her again, fantastic. Best character they could put in. Um. I think that segues quite nicely onto the Hulk. I promise I'm nearly done. Um, they ruined that plot. Like, there should have been an explanation. I said this after Ra Ragnarok. Because lots of people who hadn't always read, like, the World War Hulk and stuff comics just didn't really get what was going on. Um, so what they've done is they've merged Banner and Hulk into one being. Which is how it's supposed to go. Like... And that is phenomenal when that happens. But instead of making it this powerful, like, beast, they've kind of ruined both halves by trying to make Banner comedic instead. And that worked in sense of the Ragnarok storyline. It worked a bit there, that was great. Um, but then most of that was going back on Thor, not actually banner himself so they seem to have taken away a lot of the strength and stuff and the kind of fight that the hulk had but at the same time they seem to have made banner dumber or come across dumber and that just kind of sucks like all round that sucks no one wants that in their hulk um and i think a hulk film would have worked their fear was that hulk is a weird character to just have on a solo film but that kind of battle between the two would have been interesting stop trying to knock things off the desk um and lastly bucky is my thing 
um, they set it up perfectly for Bucky to take the shield, where um, Steve said to him, don't do anything stupid until, until I get back. And Bucky, of course, responds with, how can I when you're taking all the stupid with you? Which is, of course, flipped on their interaction from when Bucky goes to war. And that was the perfect setup for them, Buck, to take the shield. Buck gets all, like, if I didn't know who Bucky was, I wouldn't care about him that much in the MCU. Like, they just kind of slot him in and then don't really express his character very much. Sebastian Stan does it phenomenally just because he can tell so much with his eyes. But yeah, my poor baby Bucky. Um, this video has gone on so much longer than I planned it to. I am so sorry. Congratulations to anyone who got on. But overall, the film was better than I was expecting of these two films. Uh, that goes for Infinity War as well. But I just think they weren't polished very well. They weren't thought out very well. Um, some of that comes down to the mistakes I've made in films before. Um, which would be a whole other video. Uh, which obviously they can't really fix now, but all of it was just bad writing, like, oh, mm, disappointed. Some of the little things make me really mad because it's stuff they could have fixed, but yeah, overall I still cried like a baby and no one's surprised at this because I'm an emotional mess, so I'm probably going to do that some more. Uh, I'm going to watch Homecoming to cure all my illness and I'll see you guys next time where I won't just be rambling at you for half an hour because oh boy that's how long this video is. Bye!